Papa used to get one of the oldest girls to do his coffee in the morning, and they would go weekly. One of my sister named Alzina was her time to start, and she started making coffee that morning, and she went and opened the back door, and when she opened the back door, she saw water coming towards the house. Then she went and woke Papa up and told him about it. And that's when that 1927 flood came about. And when Papa got up, they had some horses in the barn, and they had a whole lot uh, out there, and and they were all out in the water. So they got on the horses, my two brother and Pop, to look to go see if they could find any, any of them. But they went so far as they could, and it was getting deeper, so had, they had to turn around and come back. And the water was coming pretty fast toward the house, which it was on a hill, and Papa would put stick to see how fast it was coming. And no sooner he would turn around and come back, it had done about, it had done about five feet or whatever. And when it was coming so close to the house, Papa decided to get a wagon and haul as much as he could in the wagon and us, because we were so many we couldn't take too many things. So we just left most of the stuff there. We went to Lafayette and stayed with two of my aunts. Through the night, the water was in the house. The water had went down a little bit. It was about four feet in the house, and the house was about two feet above the ground. All of our stock and crop was gone. My daddy didn't want to go back to farming there after he lost everything in the water. My daddy decided to move to Beaumont, so went there and worked there a while for about nine months, and then he decided to come to Houston. He still wanted to, to do some farming, so he moved to Shalango and he farmed why there until a big storm came and destroyed everything again. Destroyed all the crop and everything we had on the farm, he lost it again. So we left Shalango and came to live in Houston, and he started working at the ship channel, which it was very good paying job and during the time he was working they thought he was white but his friend and everybody around there told the boss he was black and they let him go and fired him and after they fired him he got another job working at the packing house he did pretty good there until the depression time during the depression we lived on on Panel off of Lowndes Avenue. Before the flood in 1927, Papa grew cotton, corn, sugarcane, carrot, beets, turnip, onion, garlic, tomato, okra, lettuce, mustard, Irish potato, sweet potato, peanut. When the crop was ready to sell, he used to get it together at night, and in the morning he would go downtown and sell what he had in the wagon. Every year, Mom would can the vegetable and preserve fruit, and Papa would kill a hog or a calf. We would have food for a year round. They would salt the meat down and put it into a crock pot, and it would keep. We would keep it, keep it inside the house or, or, or the smokehouse. We would smoke ham. Mama would make sausage with the meat. Mama cooked on a, on a wood stove, and that's how we would have heat, a wood heater. She would bake it in the stove, bread, pie, cake, turkey, ham, and roast. I was about five years old. Mama would make us little sack and we would go 
pick a few bowl of cotton and get tired and go sit under the wagon. Mama and all my si older sister and brother would work in the field from daybreak until nighttime, and Mama would pick about 500 pounds of co cotton a day. They had long sack. They would drag it from one end to the other. They would put it in the wagon, and when they get a full wagon, they would go sell it. We slept on some iron bed. The mattress was made out of moss, cotton shuck, and chicken feather. Every year we had to get all that stuff out and shuffle them or clean them and put them back that same day to sleep on. Mama would make the quilt by hand. The neighbor would get together and make the quilt. Maybe one or two days they were through with, with it. If they had enough pe people, they would sit all around the table. Everybody do that pattern. It was beautiful to look at them doing it, and it would look nice when they uh, get through. Hey, Louisiana, here I come. Yeah, here I come to stay. Tell them over in Oklahoma City Don't waste your time there looking for me That little old bar in Arkansas Ain't turning round my car now I've come way too far now I'm coming home to good old Louisiana Been gone from you for a time too long Always said I'd be back there again one day Great memories, they never do fade away Hey, Louisiana, here I come Yeah, here I come to stay 